Welcome to another edition of Coonrod's Corner. Today's topic, expectations of low-pass microwave filters. Now here's your host, John Coonrod. Hello, welcome to Coonrod's Corner. My name is John Coonrod. I am a technical marketing manager for Rogers Corporation. Today I'm going to give a simple tutorial of uh, RF filters. Specifically, this will be regarding low-pass filters. Now, low-pass filters is a branch of many other filters, and in the past I have done a Coonrod's Corner on other filters. It was uh, kind of a generic overview of filters, and it might be wise to look at that Coonrod's Corner first before viewing this one. The title of that Coonrod's Corner is uh, Basic Tutorial of Microwave PCB Filters. So let's go ahead and get started today. The picture shown here is actually a simple uh, illustration of a low-pass filter. And from uh, 0 to f naught frequency, which is the x-axis, that range of frequencies, uh, the filter is allowing the energy to pass through the filter. So it's called a pass band. So it's a band of frequencies that the energy is passed through. And essentially, the insertion loss is very low. So you can see the insertion loss is ideally at 0 until you get out to f naught. f naught is the cutoff frequency. And that's when the insertion loss curve makes an abrupt change and it dives down to 80 dB loss, which in this case is a tremendous amount of loss. And what that means is no energy is going to pass through at that point. So from the frequency f naught all the way out to f, that is the stop band. That's the band of frequencies where the energy is stopped from going through the filter. So this is an ideal low-pass filter. The insertion loss curve of the low-pass filter I just showed is really an ideal scenario. And in reality, the uh, insertion loss curve is not that well behaved. You have some curvature going from the pass band to the stop band. There's some other issues as well. So now let's take a look at a depiction of a low-pass filter that's a little more realistic. In the illustration here, it's showing a low-pass filter. And you can see from uh, the frequency 0 out to f naught, which is a cutoff frequency, uh, the insertion loss at that point is not a flat curve. There is some uh, slight slope to that, and that's normal because as you go across a wide range of frequencies, the insertion loss will increase, of course. And now you can also see the transition at f naught from the pass band down to the stop band. And the stop band in this case is down around 50 dB, which is pretty realistic for a well-behaved filter. At 50 dB, there's so much loss there, though, that that really is going to stop the energy. So that is the stop band of the filter. Now, if you go out in frequency a little farther to the right, then you come into an area where the insertion loss starts to improve and actually starts letting more energy through, which you do not want. And that's a, a bad thing. And in general, they call that a spurious harmonic resonant mode. And that should not be there. But that is a part of a, a real life structure of a filter. One of the reasons that the uh, low-pass filter does not have the ideal uh, curvature is because of transfer functions. And there are several different transfer functions that are used to describe the performance of the low-pass filter. And uh, in general, there's four common ones. There's actually several others, but I'm just going to talk about the four common transfer functions today. The uh, transfer function, by the way, is actually a mathematical expression of the behavior of the insertion loss in the pass band and the stop band of the filter. And really, there's four main ones that are used. Uh, the first one is Chebyshev. The other one is Butterworth. There's a Liptic and then a Gaussian filter. Now, these different transfer functions are used to design the low-pass filter for different characteristics, as can be seen in the following. In the picture, there are depicted two low-pass filters. And one of them is designed with the Chebyshev transfer function. The other one's designed with the Butterworth. The Chebyshev transfer function, you can see, has some ripple in the passband area. And then it has a pretty abrupt change from passband down to stop band. So it's a pretty crisp cutoff, which is good. And then the stop band is relatively flat. Now, in the case of Butterworth, it does not have the ripple in the passband area. And actually, if I drew this a little more, at, uh, a little more accurate, a little higher resolution, you would find that the Butterworth has a little lower losses than the Chebyshev in the passband region. But one of the trade-offs is, is the Butterworth will have a, a transition for the f naught uh, over a wider range of frequencies. So you do not get that crisp cutoff as you do with the Chebyshev transfer function. The elliptical transfer function is not shown here, but it's very similar to the Chebyshev. And that is that there's ripple in the passband. And with the elliptical, there's also ripple in the stop band. And uh, the, that is the, the bad, bad side of the elliptical function. The good side of it is the transition from the pass band to the stop band is very abrupt. And that's a good thing for filters. And then finally, the Gaussian transfer function. That is more similar to the Butterworth. And uh, it has a, a transition that's very wide and spread across a lot of frequency. 
the good part about the Gaussian transfer function is that it's very flat for group delay and phase response in the passband region. So even though the cutoff from the uh, passband to the stop band is not very abrupt, the benefit of having very flat group delay can be very good for some filters. Now, how do you make a low-pass filter out of a PCB circuit? Uh, there's actually several different ways, and in general, what's done is a resonant structure is made, a resonator, and then these resonators are coupled together to form a filter function. And there's several different types of resonators that can be used. In the case of a low-pass filter, though, a stepped impedance structure is very often used. And what the stepped impedance structure is, is pretty much as the name implies. You have structures that are very uh, narrow conductors and structures that are very wide. And the narrow is a high impedance, the wide is a low impedance, and that step in impedance actually causes a resonance. And as you put these together, cascade them together, what you get is a filter function. In the picture here, the top picture is a, a low-pass filter. It's a top view of a microstrip low-pass filter used in the stepped impedance structure. And you can see that it's got areas with very thin conductors, which is high impedance, which acts like an inductor. And then you have areas that have very wide conductors that act like a capacitor that is very low impedance. So the transition from this high impedance, low impedance actually causes a resonance. And as you cascade these together, you can see in the schematic below here, uh, a depiction of uh, the low-pass filter, and it's really made up of these uh, differences in impedance. Now let's take a look at a low-pass filter that I designed uh, for having a pass band from 0 hertz up to about 2 gigahertz, and then cutting off around about 2.3 gigahertz, and then having a good stop band beyond that. In the picture here, you can see that the, the low-pass filter is actually very well behaved. So from the frequency axis, uh, x-axis, you can see from 0 to 2 gigahertz, the low-pass filter has uh, got very low insertion loss, and it's actually very flat, very well behaved. Uh, that's because what I did was use a Butterworth transfer function, which means you do not have ripple, and it's a very low loss. But it also means that the transition from the pass band to the stop band is not that crisp. So you can see over a range of frequencies, you get the transition from the pass band to the stop band. And out around 3 gigahertz or so, you can see there's about 30 dB of loss, which is actually a considerable amount of loss. So this filter would be a good filter to use if you have an application that's running from 0 up to 2 gigahertz and then cutting off around 3 gigahertz or more. And a good example would be some systems are using 3.6 gigahertz, and uh, this would be a really good uh, filter to be used for the low-pass filter that allows energy through up to 2 gigahertz and then blocks off energy at 3.6 gigahertz. And roughly speaking, at 3.6 gigahertz, you can see on the chart there's about 40 dB of loss, so that is a lot of loss, and the filter really is not going to allow much energy to pass through. This concludes this session of Coonrod's Corner. Thank you for watching. For additional information and technical tools, if you're not already a member, join the Rogers Technical Support Hub and gain access to calculators, technical papers, and more Rogers Corporation informational videos. Rogers Technical Information is also available at your fingertips with the Rog mobile app, available for the iPhone, iPad, and Android devices. Check it out today.